Okay, so this is stage two where we're going to create the mock-up from the wireframe that we just built. So we've already used this wireframe document to build up a new wireframe. I'm going to exit that and I'm going to not save it because I know it's already saved properly. And I am going to now save this as a new document called mockup. And the reason I'm doing that is I don't want to lose my original document should I ever need to come back to this wireframe or export them so that I can use them as JPEG. So I'll export this first actually. We'll go to File, Export, and I will select JPEG from my format menu, save it to the desktop, click Save, and then I will just kind of let it be what it is. 300 resolution so that it's a nice printable graphic should you ever need to use this for um, a process book of some kind. Leave it as pages, range one, there's only one page, click export. So now I have this nice wireframe image that I have saved. Go to exit that. And now I'm going to go to save this document as. So you can go to file, save as, and call it a new name. So this time I'm gonna call it mockup save it to the desktop. So now I have two documents, wireframe and mockup. This is now mockup, no longer wireframe. Now let's look at the original mockup I created and we'll use that to build, to populate this one. So I'm gonna to go to my templates, I'm gonna grab my other mockup document and I'm gonna open it so we can see kind of what I did here. So here we go, this is my other mockup document and it's kind of ready to go. I've styled the type, I've added actual content here and I've dropped in my images. Now before you can populate this document, the first thing you're actually gonna to need to do is open Photoshop and crop down any of your images to the proper size. Here you can see I have a variety of images I've collected from the internet, and um, I'm gonna use these in my site. So these ones are already cropped, but I have some original ones located on the server. However, we're just going to use the ones I've made, but let me show you quickly how you would go through the workflow of cropping down your images to fit the different image boxes. So I would open Photoshop. See how that pops up. And now what I would do is I'd be working back and forth between these two documents. I would click one of these boxes and find out the size and then go create the image I needed here. So if I were to go to my layers and unlock that back layer so I could select everything and grab this box, I can see that it's 1,000 pixels wide by 200 pixels high. If I come to Adobe Photoshop and I go to File New, let's see, there we go. I can then select kind of what I want to do here. So I am going to make this 1,000 pixels wide by 200 pixels tall. And now the resolution is already set at 72, and that is fine for web. You can definitely use that. You can up it to up to at max 150. I would not go that high really. I usually like to stay around 100 because it's a really easy number to remember. It's all good. Uh, we're gonna, when we export them, they will become smaller in size anyway, so it's not super relevant. I'm gonna switch it to RGB color because that's the web color space. But if you forget to do these two things, don't worry. When you export them, this stuff will happen for you anyway. I just like to do it at the beginning. I'm gonna give it a name already. I'm gonna call it banner and I'm gonna click OK. Now I have a properly sized image to match the image in my mockup. I can then go select and uh, whatever graphic I wanted to cut down. So I'm going to go to not new, but file open. And I'm going to go find that object. And I know for me, it's on the server. So I'm going to go hunting for it over here. Basic web week two, I think up here, I should have Paris resources. So here is the original images that I took from the internet. So these are just the full resolution. Well, not really full resolution. They're already kind of web-sized images because I took them from the internet. But I can grab these larger images, click open, and then I can hit Command A to select all, and then Command C. You can also do that here. Select all, and then edit, copy, come back to my banner document, hit Command V to paste, and then really just build my banner however I want to do it. So. If this was kind of my banner and I kind of want to crop it like here, I could definitely do that. Um, create a new layer. I could add text if I want this to be my banner here. So welcome to Paris. Make that larger. Basically any Photoshop stuff you want to do, you can do it right here. So it's, it's kind of pretty easy. So welcome to Paris. Let's say that that's my banner and I'm happy with that. Once you've actually created your banner and you're ready to go, or just simply cropped your images and not added text, you don't need to add text to all of them. 
Um, when you're ready, all you have to do is go to File, Save for Web. And this is important. You don't want to save as a JPEG or save as something. It won't compress the file enough for web in a way that will make your website load quickly. So this is true of any web platform, whether you do a blog, whether you're doing um, uh, news, whether you're doing anything. If you prepare your images by saving them for web, they will load faster and they will be less stealable from the Internet. Because if you upload really high resolution images, it's so easy for someone to just take those right off your site. So I love to keep everything really low and compressed so that at least it's not printable if they steal it. So save for web. When you get saved from web, you have a couple different tabs up here. And these tabs are really nice because they allow you to, to compare the compression in the images. So you can kind of see here that this one is grainier than this one. If I look at this one, it says original, and this one says JPEG um, 25.17K. That's the size. So this is a compression at quality 15. So when you click between them, it kind of lets you know. I'm going to go to the 4-up, and you can see that over here on the right, it tells you some different quality levels for your compression of the image. So here I'm going to up the quality to like 75% so that it's just a little better. That looks a little sharper than definitely that. It's a little hard to see from a distance, but you can kind of see that this one's better than this one. So I'm just going to select that one. You can see right here it has checked convert to sRGB, so convert to web color mode. It tells me my image size and it tells me what format I'm saving it in. If you need to save anything with transparency, it needs to be either a ping or a GIF slash GIF, however you choose to pronounce that. So when I'm done with that, I click Save, not done, Save. Oh, not FileZilla. Okay, so there we go. Save, Banner, and then in this case, for the moment, I'm just going to save it to the desktop. I'm going to click Save. Now, once you have done that to all of your images, there's one little step you have to complete before you actually get into placing these in the mock-up and that's putting them in a proper site folder. So assuming you haven't actually even made your site folder yet, you probably want to do that now while you have all your wireframes and stuff happening. So I'm going to go to the desktop and create a new folder and I'm going to call this Paris underscore two just so I'll remember what this one is. I'm going to open that folder and I'm going to create a couple folders inside. The first folder I'm going to create is called images. This is where I will put all the images I need for my site. So I'm going to drag my banner right there. The next one I'm going to create is called templates. And now templates is a great place to put all of your other wireframes. So I'm going to drop the wireframe.jpg and the wireframe.indesign. I'm not going to move the mockup yet because it will delink the saving item here. So I can come back to do that. But now that I have that banner there, I'm just going to go back to Parasite and I'm going to copy all of these images into that folder by highlighting them hitting Command C, going back to Paris 2, and hitting Command V in the folder. So now all of these images are already pre-cropped. I've made everything the right size. It's all saved for web. I have a nice background image here that's a repeatable tile, and I have my other banner. So that is all ready to go. So once you've created that folder with everything in it ready to start creating, you can just minimize that or exit it come back to InDesign and start placing things where you need to place them. So placing is interesting because it links your boxes, it links your images in the document to the original images so that if you change them they will update in this document. So it's important that you keep your files together, you keep your folders together, you keep your files together. So I'm going to grab this banner here and I'm going to place my banner that I created into it by clicking this object and hitting Command D. You can also go to File, Place, but Command-D is a faster shortcut. So Place. I will then go Find Paris 2, Images, and we'll use our new banner. So we'll hit Banner, and we'll click OK. It'll drop right in the box. It's really that simple. So all I have to do now is click on my other boxes and start dropping things in. So Command-D. Um, I believe this one is Welcome, so I'll click OK. I will click this one, Command-D. I have a couple different gallery images here, so I saved a few, but we'll just click Gallery 1, OK. Finally, this is grouped, so to get to the box, I may have to use the white arrow to click something that's inside a group. That's a neat little thing to know. Hit Command-D, and then this one was, I believe, Contact. Hit Place, and then I didn't have an image for the footer, so that's fine. I'm going to do the last ones are the thumbnail, so Command-D, Thumb 1. Command-D, Thumb 2, and Command-D, Thumb 3. So now my images are placed. 
The last couple things I need to do are to select my boxes and get my coloring the way I want to get my coloring for my final website. So I can look back at my mock-up and I can kind of come here, double click the colors and then find the CMYK codes to adjust over and bring those over the other one. I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to recreate the colors myself from the images. I think for you guys, you want to kind of do something that blends together. So I'm going to grab the box and I'm going to use my eyedropper tool to select a color from the image. I'm clicking and dragging here. I haven't let go yet because I want to highlight over and find a color I like. And I saw kind of a mint greeny color like that that looks nice. So I'll let go and it kind of changes it. If I'm unhappy with that and I go it's too dark, I can kind of just click back through it. So I can click my object again, go back to my eyedropper and start highlighting through. Oh, I had a good one there until I find something that I like. So let's see if I can go with this lighter green. Oop, missed it. So once you've done that, it kind of, you have to reset by clicking the object again, clicking the eyedropper, and refining the color you're looking for. So actually, that sandy color is kind of nice. Let's go with that for now, because that kind of blends the top with this page here. So that's good. Let's go to my banner. I'm going to leave my banners gray, but I'm going to bump them up to 60% gray. It looks a little better. I'm going to do the same with the footer, drop that, bring that over to 60% gray, hit enter. And then I'm going to select my last two colors here. So I'll grab this one, use my eyedropper, um, pick something probably kind of dark because this is the gallery and I want the images to pop. So I'm going to pick something, had a nice mob there, so I can find it again. There we go. So that'll work for that one. And then finally the bottom one, grab the background image again and pick something that's kind of going to blend with the other two. So I can kind of go in the warm color palette here, pick something that I can find in the tower. So we'll go with, ooh, too bright. Let's grab that again. Oh, okay, that's too dark. So let's try that one more time. Now, if you don't like the way this is selecting, you can always double click here and then use these different modes of color to choose a color that's more what you're looking for. So if I like the color feeling, but I want it to be a little brighter, I can do something like that. And then I have my colors set. So I've now set my colors. Now I have to start adjusting my typography. So I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna highlight these guys here, and I'm gonna change my type a little bit. I'm gonna pick a typeface that I know exists in Adobe Dreamweaver. So I wanna pick a web save typeface. So I know Palatino is one of those. I'll show you where to check that momentarily, but I'm gonna go with Palatino, and I'm gonna go with Palatino Regular. I believe I can find this one here. If not, I think it's actually Perpetua. Let's try Perpetua. Perpetua. Perpetual regular. So I've changed the typeface. I can do that for all my other boxes by typing that in. Perpetua. It'll pop up. And same here. Perpetua. I can also just grab all of the boxes by click and shift. I'm going to ungroup these so that it's easier to grab this. Hit ungroup by right mouse clicking. Grab those. Grab that one. And then I can change the type by opening the type window, which will be window character, command T, and then selecting Perpetua and selecting them like that. And you can see that those both changed. Drop that over here. And now they're ready. So now I just want to change my sizing a little bit and I want to add in the real content. For now, leaving these black seems to work, but for the links, I want the typography to be white. So I'm going to shift click all of them, come over here to, to uh, color, which should be somewhere around here. I can probably just do it here. And I want to pick something brighter. So let's go through here until I can find something where I can click a brighter color, get myself to like a whitish, click OK. So now that changed the boxes. That'll sometimes happen if you don't have this the type highlighted because we see type color comes in here. So I think, I think I might leave the boxes, but if I don't like it, I can just come back here. I can double click this or I can select none. So I'm going to select that none again. I'm going to come into these boxes and I'm going to change the color like this. So sometimes when you select things as a group, it's going to color it a way you're not expecting. You can always just come back to none and it will adjust it. So now I have those ready. I'm going to put some actual type, type copy that I took from Wikipedia here. Copy, bring it back here and paste it. 
and it pasted it in with the exact formatting of the other document, which was helpful in this case. Copy, scroll down, and paste it. Now in this case, this color is not so readable. So I may, I can choose to change the color of the typography or I can choose to change the color of the background. In this case, I am going to change the color of the background. So if I find at this stage I don't like something, I can come back and make adjustments and get things looking the way I want them to look. So we'll go with that for now. So it's pretty rainbow, crazy looking site, but you get the idea. So here's everything there, let's zoom in, make sure everything's good. Once you've uh, styled everything the way you want it styled, the last thing you need to do is just to save it. So I know one thing's missing and that's this copyright object. I'm gonna hit Command C, I'm gonna paste it, and I'm gonna drop it in till it aligns up right there. Now it looks like it's there, everything's good. Command S to save, and then finally file export to export our mockup JPEG. So to the desktop, leave that as it is, hit export, minimize, and then I can go to my site and I can now finally drop this mockup along with mockup.indesign into the templates folder. So now that I've created my templates, it's time to actually start creating the site.